We have to create an environment where people come to work not with their game face on. They don't come to work feeling they have to act differently. They don't come to work wondering what they should say or wondering if are they going to fit in and not worrying about the cultural fit. It's not about cultural fit. It's about cultural expansion. I think it was very important for me to have you helping leading the charge. We need focus, we needed the commitment, we needed really the, the galvanizing you know, momentum that you've created, uh, which was a first with an HSBC. I think the things that we've done around increasing diversity on our board, um, having a board liaison that works directly with me on yep. diversity, more conversations with our exco, with our executive committee around what we're doing, are real tangible things that make sure this is at the right level and has the right focus and attention. There's talent all across the organization, Michael. I think you would agree. It doesn't, regardless of background, age, ethnicity, but in terms of diverse talent, there are efforts that we're making to ensure that all diverse talent is accounted for. And that's why we created the People Manager Objective it really sets a tone and it really puts on the radar of our people managers that they're accountable for ensuring inclusion in development in building diverse talent within their teams. So that was really exciting that we did that. It's the first time we did that ever last year and it will continue. And now they're doing it at the UK level as well. We've seen how strong our talent is, but we really needed to sit down and have open discussions to to identify that talent and importantly put diverse talent on succession list. You can't succeed if you're not really right. on a succession right. list. Now we sit around the entire Exco twice a year and we talk about talent and how we will need to nurture the talent where we where they are in their own sort of journeys. Is that person, is she better served someplace else? Right. Do you know we put her on a list to make sure that she has that ability to advance, which is great for the individual, the diverse candidate, but also really good for this institution. I agree. Everyone out of that meeting has an ownership responsibility to develop the talent on that list to make sure they are successful. Those succession conversations has led naturally into the sponsorship, the executive sponsorship effort that all of the leaders have launched, which is, which is great. I think the sponsorship program is critical to this. Uh, you know, I was lucky to have three sponsorees and good news, they all advance. They all have uh, great new jobs. And I think that's critically important because by providing that guidance, providing the uh, support, I think it was important for them to see the pass open to them. But if we can do that all throughout the entire Exco, you can imagine the type of progress we'll have. You know, Michael, I've been here for 19 years in the organization, and I've seen a lot of changes uh, strategically, market changes, business changes. I think the goal is for me personally is how can I help build representation that's more successful throughout the organization that happens to be diverse? And I mean that across all diversity, whether it's neurodiversity, disability, LGBTQ, ethnicity, I think all the full hue of diversity, I think there's really great opportunity to be successful and us to be even more successful as a company. I would say for me personally, this is as important as any other part of my go you know, goals and aspirations for this company. And I want everybody to do exactly the same thing. Just when you think about what numbers you're going to make for the end of the quarter or year, uh, we should think about are we making progress on diversity? and measure ourselves, hold ourselves accountable. I hold myself very accountable for this. So I am excited because I think we are making progress. I agree. Somewhat impatient because I would like to do it uh, quicker and I'm sure um, I'm not the only one. I know you are as well. I will continue to be highly committed to this as is a number one uh, goal for me. I would like everybody to embrace that to the same degree. In July of 2020, we launched the six pillars to advance inclusion around things like representation, recruiting, retention, advancing the conversation, et cetera, which we've done a lot of. And the thing that I like about that is those six areas give us continuity and consistency over time. One of the items I'm excited about is our bias awareness and practice training, which we want every employee to go through. 
And this is training in a way that we've never done it before. It really shouldn't even be called training. It should be called culture transformation. And this is where I think it will help people really understand in a deeper level how to create an environment of belonging. And I'm really excited that that's coming soon. I am too. I think we're, we have done a lot, as you said. Uh, I think we're going to do more. And every year we're going to add it on to that. So in terms of what's next, Michael, we've done a number of things. What we've done is started with transparency, with our recent disclosures of representation. And now we're increasing representation and reporting every year annually during our reporting cycle. So that's big because people know where we are and we're holding ourselves accountable. Right. And if we could expand the culture, that means we get to have a much greater and more diverse sense of who we are. We also represent who our clients are in a much more diverse way. It represents what we want to be. 